Hey puzzlers, this is Steve here with another video on how to solve some logic puzzles. This one is known as a Corrado. Each cell must either be black or white, and the numbered cells are always going to be white and indicate how many black cells can be reached by moving orthogonally one cell at a time. So what that means is this 5, for instance, let's say if these were uh, all black, even though these two black cells over here are not adjacent to the 5, they still count towards the 5 because they can be reached via this cell. So 1, 2, 3. So what's important to remember is there's always 4 connection points at most on any number through the orthogonal sides. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the one other rule set is that if there's no number indicated within a circle, that means any number of black cells can be uh, next to it. So that's it. What I'm going to go ahead and do is try to solve this puzzle for you guys, sharing some common tips and tricks along the way that will hopefully make it easier for you to solve this type of puzzle yourself in the future. Now, without further ado, where would I start? Typically, I'm going to start wherever there's big numbers next to small numbers or in corners or look for circles that um, are kind of jammed or cornered. So for instance, this three only has one cell connected to it. So obviously that has to be uh, black and there has to be three um, black cells all connected via this one. Uh, so what that means is this four is also going to likely have three uh, because if we think about it, if we look at the maximum number of black cells in any direction, right here is one, then three is going to have to connect here, which is also going to run into this three here. So you, what you have to realize with a Corrado is how the numbers connect with one another, or, or if, if you have a black cell, how do they collide with one another, if, if that makes sense. So we know this is going to be black because there's no way to have four cells off of this one. You're going to break this three, right? So we know this has to be black that has to be black with three connected to it and this has to be black with three connected to it now we don't know if the third cell is going to be here or here but either way we know that's going to solve this four this three and also this four because you can see three is going to be connected via this cell so what that means is this can't be black and that can't be black because we know this is going to be or this is going to be which is going to solve that one so hopefully that makes sense now this two has only one black cell, it needs one more. There's only one possible outcome for that, it's there. Now we can't connect any more, otherwise it's gonna break that two because it's gonna have, you know, you can't, it can't have three uh, black cells. So we're going to put a dot there saying that it can't extend any further. Now this three here can't come down. Uh, it's gone to the maximum over to the right as one. So it needs two more, it's gotta come up and it's forced then to go to the left, and that's three. So one, two, three, can't go any further this way, and it can't come up here, that would break that rule, uh, or that three, so we stop that there. Now this three is maxed out, um, it can't go to the left, can't go to the right, and it's maxed out above it, right? You see one, two, can't go further right or left or up, so it has to come down one for its third shaded cell. Now, if this can't extend further left, because otherwise it would break it. There would be four black cells attached to that three. So we stop that there. This six is going to be forced to come to the left, right? Can't go up or down, can't go to the right. So there's going to be six off of this one right here. So what that means is there's no way it could connect here and touch the one, because you might be able to solve the six, but you're going to break the one. And same thing, it can't touch this three because again, this blob of shaded cells is gonna have to be six, which will break the three. So what we know by that is, and then oh, also it can't go up, right? It's kind of gated, if you will, it's, it's stuck. It can't, can't go further north than this because it'd run into the one, can't go left, it'd run into the three, um, and it can't come out to the left anymore so what that tells me is at most it can go up one and over one. So that's three, it has to come down at least one. So let's just for um, a moment leave those unmarked, but it has to come down, we know that. That at most be, would be one, two, three, four, 
still can't come this way. We know this now. We can block this off because otherwise, if this was shaded, it would ruin the one. We can block that off. So at most, it would be one, two, three, four. It's got to come down one more, five. And now we know it's got to come over at least one more, but either here, here, or here. We just don't know which way. And it could actually come more because it, do it doesn't have to come up, right? But we do know these three are forced. All right. Um, now this one is interesting because it's either going to be this one or this one. Either way, if it's this one, it can't expand further left. And if it's this one, it can't expand further north. So whenever you have an instance like this where you know it's going to be one either up or left or up or right, you can mark this corner one as unshaded. Now, if we think about this nine, this is a very big number. Um, I'm thinking it has to be attached to the six and this three, right? Because if it's attached to this blob of six shaded cells and it's added to this three, that's nine. I think there's no other way for you, right? If this, let's say this blob went like this, to solve the six and then you couldn't expand there's no way to get nine shaded cells in there so what that means is this blob of six has to connect here to this nine we know that and this three is going to have to connect to this nine because if let's say for instance it's like this that solves the sixes the six is attached to the the nine and if the three was not attached to the nine again where are you going to get the other three in there there's not enough space so that's why it's really important, in my opinion, to look for the really big numbers next to the small ones, because um, it gets really constrained. So with all that said, we know this three's got to attach to the nine this way. Can't go further down, and this nine's gonna attach to the six. So six plus three is nine, so we know this can't be added to the nine. We just don't know how this six is gonna connect. Um, actually, I take that back, we do know. If we look at this six, it's forced to come up, right? Can't go right, can't go left, can't go down. So it has to come up. And it's now attached to this blob of six, which we know is going to resolve this one. So we have one, two, three, four. Um, oh, same here. We're going to have run into the same issue. This six can't go right, can't go left, can't go down. It has to come up. Uh, and so now we know this five can't connect with this blob of six because this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and there's going to be one more. So if it attached here, it would solve these sixes, but it would break this five. So we know the five can't connect there. So the five has to come off this way, one, two, and then add three more somewhere. Um, so we know that. Now, we think one, two, three, four, five. We need one more. It could be here, could be there, could be there, could be there. So that's a lot of choices. Um, I'm thinking we should kind of go elsewhere in the grid and come back to that. Um, I'm noticing this six is pretty force, pretty much forced to come up, right? You have one, two, at most three over here. So it needs to have uh, uh, some up here. Now we can't have this connect with the one. So we, if we have this blob come up here, it, it's going to break the one. Same thing. If it comes over here, it's going to break the one. So we, we have to stop it from connecting with the one. The one's forced to come over here. Oops. And, um, this three uh, is forced to connect with these two. So now we have one, two, three. That solves the three. We have one, two, three, four, five coming off the six. We need one more. That's going to solve both the six and the four. This four only has three. We need one more to solve that, which also incidentally solves this one. So we can say this blob can't go any further. Obviously, it can't come out here anymore, so we leave that unshaded. Now this two uh, only has one direction it can go in. It's over here, but we don't know if the second one's up here or down there, so we're going to leave that alone for now. Um... You know, at this point, I'm thinking this six needs to connect here with this group of six. And the reason for that, if we come over here, we've added one, 
and where do you put the other five, right? Let's say you connect it with the fives. That's a group of five. This six needs one more. Well, it can't come over here because now that'd be 11, right? Five plus six connecting to this. You can't have 11 shaded cells connecting to that. So I don't think it can come over here. Because um, again, otherwise it would need six off on this side. And you're just not going to fit that because, you know, if you come over here and there's six attached to this shaded area, you're going to break this five. Come up here, you're going to break the one. Yeah, it's just not going to work. So it can't go that way. It's got to connect here, which solves now all of those. This nine is solved, so it can't come up anymore. Now, these fives, I think, have to connect, right? Because there's no way to solve this five without touching this five. Um, how they connect, whether they connect like this or this, I, you know, that I don't know, but I think no matter what, this cell cannot be unshaded, right? Because that would only allow four over here and then nothing more could connect to that five. So this has to be shaded. That's three. And so we need two more. It could either be these two, those two, or this one and that one and be like a T-shape. We'll come back to that. Um, this seven, I think this seven is going to tell us it's going to have to connect with this five and have the two come up here. Because think about it. I mean, how else are you going to fit? There's no way to fit seven, you know, without breaking these fours up here. So what that tells me is this comes up like that. That solves the fives, right? One, two, three, four, five. So these are unshaded. And then the seven needs two more. So it comes up like that. This is unshaded. Uh, this here is unshaded. Otherwise, it would break these fives. That'd be uh, six. So this can't be unshaded, or this can't be shaded, which then forces this one to come up here. Uh, and we can't extend the one any further. This six can't come up here anymore, or this shaded block can't extend anymore, otherwise you'd have seven. So that's left like that. Now this four, we have two. Maximum uh, over here on the other side would be one, that'd be three. So we need at least one up here. And now when it comes to Corrado's, I'll admit, I think these are pretty difficult puzzles, um, at least at first. And now this is an easier one, but they do get tough. And at a certain point, I think it just takes a little bit of intuition and, and just um, process of elimination. And I think when I was first solving this puzzle, I got to this point and, and I just I, I kind of ran out of logic and just started um, you know, using intuition as to where what what blocks could be shaded. So um, I apologize if I can't explain this last part uh, well enough, but I will look to see if I can figure out something logical. Um, these threes need two more uh, added to them. This four needs one more and this four needs one more. So we know either this one's going to be shaded or this one's going to be shaded, but not both. Right, we know that. Um, we've talked about this too earlier. It's either going to be this one or this one, but not both. So this seven is going to have two over here connected, and it's going to need five more. So I think it's going to have to connect with this five. And so it either can connect like with through via this cell, or it can connect via those you know those cells up there. But we do know that this 5 and 7 connect. Um, and now this 5 and 7, or this 5 is going to have to have all 5 of its shaded cells connect with the 7. And it can't come down here because it would break the 4 and the 3. So what that means is this can't be shaded now. I think that solves it. Right? Because otherwise... I mean, I suppose you could have, you know, now four coming like this, and then the two could come down. Now, yeah, see, that's gonna that's gonna break the seven. There's no way, there's no way to do that. So, 
again, let me, I'll try to explain that. This five and seven need to connect without touching these down here. So what that means is this can't be shaded. To, so to solve this four, we need one more. To solve this four, we need one more. Uh, and then that can't go any further. So now this five is getting a little cramped. Um, and so I think at this point, I just thought, well, what if it's this pentomino, right? Uh, this five like this and the two comes down and then you stop all of that and then the threes are solved. And so I, again, I really apologize. I wish I had a better way uh, of explaining that last section, but that, that's really what went on through my mind. Um, sometimes when you get to the very last bit of a puzzle, um, it's just intuition or, or, or just taking a guess or, or using process of elimination. Sort of like when you're solving a jigsaw puzzle. You know, in the very beginning, there's very logical steps that you take. Okay, we're going to find the edge pieces. We're going to group all the colors together. Uh, but then when you start to get to the very end, you just, you know, you only got a handful of pieces left. You just start grabbing random pieces and just randomly trying to shove it into uh, the gaps. And <laughs> at least that's how I solve them. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I do, again, I really like the Corrado puzzles. I do think they're harder um, than, than your, uh, a lot of other puzzles out there. But give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.